All right, hello everyone and welcome back to the video. So today I'm gonna to be going over the French civilization and just showing you guys what options they have and going over the technology tree to really get a good grasp of what the Civ has to offer. I'm still learning the Civ and I plan to be actually uh, a French main. I want this to be one of my main civilizations that I focus on because it's simple to play, simple to understand and therefore in theory should be simple to get better with the Civ. Um, and I hope you guys want to pick it up as well. It seems like a very interesting Civ and actually quite powerful from the people I've been talking to. So uh, we're going to go through what it's good at, what units to go for, what to kind of, uh, you know, what the game plan is. And um, yeah, let's hop into it. So uh, the French, and they give you the difficulty here, they describe it as an aggressive cavalry and economic civilization. And they give you a little bit of a summary of what the Civ is supposed to be good at. But what we want to know are the stats and the numbers. Let's scroll down to the civilization bonuses here. And so their first bonus is that they produce faster villager and scout production per age. You can produce scouts from the town center. So this just makes your TC work faster to produce units. Very good economical uh, bonus there. Faster, faster producing villagers is definitely a really good thing because it kind of speeds up your development altogether. Reminds me of the Persians from Age of Empires 2, of course. Uh, economic technology is 30% cheaper. This is like your gold mining upgrade, your stone mining upgrades. It's actually one upgrade in this game. Uh, your wood chopping, wheelbarrow, all these things that you'd want to get to develop your, to develop your eco. 30% cheaper is a big deal. That's a very good economic bonus. And resource drop-off buildings are 25 wood cheaper. So from 50 wood to 25 wood, it's actually a very good bonus, especially for the early game. That's to get some super smooth builds. And I've played a few games with the Franks or French. I've actually only played with the French so far. So uh, I have a little bit of understanding, especially of how the early game should be played. Uh, trade posts are revealed uh, on the minimap at the start of the game. I still don't know what to do with the trade posts, but from my understanding, it's just something that you can trade with. Think of it like uh, a teammate's market in Age of Empires 2. You can trade with it, uh, and it's pretty good for late game, but I don't really see the benefit of this for early game, so this feels more or less like a weak bonus, but I'm not sure yet. Traders can return any resources to the market. It can be good to have some flexibility there, especially in the late game. And melee damage techs are researchable for free. They're actually instantly researched upon hitting Feudal Age uh, or upon hitting the next age. You don't even need a blacksmith from my understanding. So this is a very, very nice military bonus. Love to see it. And then their trade ships return 20% more gold. Uh, only helpful on water maps. And next up, we've got influence. Uh, so units produced from an archer range or stable within the influence of a keep are 20% cheaper. Keep is like your castle. Think of it like a castle in Age of Empires 2. It's a big defensive structure that's available to you in the later stage of the game. And it costs 800 stone. It's available in the castle age, I believe. It costs 800 stone. And uh, if, you build, if you make uh, production buildings around the keep, then the units produced from there will be 20% cheaper. That's true for stable and archer range. So uh, not a bad bonus. Going to be something to look out for in the late game, for sure. You definitely want to be producing from those uh, buildings. And 20% cheaper is a pretty big deal. So definitely a solid bonus, but maybe a little bit harder to use. And then their unique unit is the Royal Knight, which gains bonus damage for three, se uh, for three seconds after completing a charge. This is available in the, sta in the stable, and it starts, uh, or it's available in the Feudal Age as well. Then they have the Arbaletier, which is uh, an archer unit from the archer range and deploys a defensive pavis that provides five range armor for 30 seconds. Uh, and then they've got the uh, Agalius, which is a large war galley that has a long range forward mounted bombard, which I have yet to try out, but it sounds hella dope. So uh, that's pretty much what they have available for unique units and unique um, uh, bonuses. Let's hop in and see what they have to offer from um, I guess their tech tree. I'm not going to go through everything real quick, but I'm going to quickly show you guys some of the um, upgrades that they can pick up. So obviously the lumber camp has some eco upgrades uh, that you want to pick up also with the mill. You have wheelbarrow, which is pretty important. It's available in the dark age. And then you've got the horn, uh, horticulture, uh, which and then fertilization. So this line of uh, eco upgrades, which increases gathering rate for food. So wheelbarrow and these are very important. Whereas other upgrades are not that important. Same thing for the lumber camp. This is not that important, but it's pretty good to get later on. But this one feels like it's the most important. Uh, to my knowledge, that's how, um, you know, that's what I've noticed does the most, has the most impact. And then obviously the mining camp upgrades are really good to get. And all these you have discounts for. So it's really, really good economic civilization, of course. The farm is a farm. And then their, their main options here. So they've got like the standard options, uh, like the barracks, the dock, etc. Uh, the main thing to keep in mind here is this Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber of Cavalry. Uh, so if you take a look here, 
Uh, the Chamber of Commerce. So this this is the building you make uh, on your way to feudal age. You have to make a building. You choose between the Chamber of Commerce and the School of Cavalry. This one acts as kind of a market that lets you make traders, and this one counts as a stable that lets you make the horsemen and the uh, the knights, um, and also the scout. I definitely recommend going with the School of Cavalry with Franks. It's just feels so much smoother, feels so much better. Having a stable in the early game lets you put pressure or defend yourself, whereas having a market is only, I feel like, really good for tight builds, and I feel like those just simply have not yet been covered uh, or been uncovered yet. So only go for the Chamber of Commerce if you feel like there's going to be like no chance for early game pressure. If you're not sure, definitely go for the School of Cavalry. It's more flexible. Uh, next up, you've got the Blacksmith, and obviously you get the... Uh, attack damage for free, so increase the melee damage of all non sieges by one. You get all these for free, so you can see they cost quite a bit. You're getting all that savings, both in resources and time. It's very, very nice, but the rest of the upgrades you're going to obviously have to go ahead and get. So that's the blacksmith. And then going on down to the archer range, definitely something I want to talk about here is the arbalist here. Uh, it's a high damage range unit with a defensive pava shield, as we've said, and it's anti armor specialist. So against other cavalry, you can definitely use the Arbiter as a good counter. And then they also have the Archer, which is good against um, uh, light units. So if your opponent goes for like some sort of Spearman or something to counter cavalry, a good counter could be the Archer and the Hand Cannoneer in the Imperial Age. Definitely don't, don't sleep on these units, especially uh, if your opponent thinks you're going to go cavalry, because the French are pretty strong with cavalry. Going for Archers is a very, very nice you know, tactic to switch things up. Keep your opponent uh, on his toes. And then next up, you've got the stable. Like I said earlier, uh, your chamber of... What is it called? Chamber of... Uh, School of Cavalry. There it is. School of Cavalry will count as a stable, but you can obviously produce more stables in the Feudal Age. Uh, and then you have access to all your units, including your unique unit, the Royal Knights. So uh, definitely a, a very, very powerful unit. Think of it like the Paladin from Age of Empires 2. And then the Veteran Horseman is more of like a standard uh, kind of light raiding unit. Think of it like the Hissar. Um, and yeah, definitely very solid here uh, from the stable. Then they have a few unique texts like the Chivalry, which gives Royal Knights uh, plus one health every one second out of combat, so they regenerate, which is pretty good. And then Cattled Sandals, um, which gives um, Royal Knights bonus damage after they charge. And the Royal Knights themselves have a charge, so let's go ahead and read them. So they gain a bonus charge or gain bonus damage for three seconds after charging, effective against most units. And they're heavy armor and strong in melee combat, but they're countered by spearmen and crossbowmen. And if you're in the French mirror match, they're countered by the arbalatier, so definitely be careful of those. Uh, they're quite expensive at 140 food and 100 gold, so not the best early game unit, but definitely something you can pick up in the, like, the late feudal, early castle, and even late castle, um, depending on the kind of strategy you go for. Remember, this game develops way faster than Age of Empires 2. You can build town centers in feudal. That means late feudal already. Some strong units will start to be already on the battlefield. So uh, the pace is quick, and uh, it's definitely something you have to keep in, uh, keep in mind. Uh, so here's the keep. Uh, keep is uh, 800 stone, and it's a defensive building in the castle age. Lets you get a couple things, uh, a couple upgrades from it, but it doesn't let you actually make any units. So it's strictly defensive or I guess offensive, depending on where you place it. Building. Um, and that's pretty much all I want to cover from the French. Just going to go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the next, um, I forgot what they're called, but when you age up, defensive landmark, that's what they're called, the next landmarks here. Um, so as you click up, oh, I forgot to mention, actually, in Feudal Age, you've got the Royal Institute or the Guild Hall. Uh, Royal Institute is something that gives you access to a lot of your technologies. And the Guild Hall is, can I click it? Um, so it generates and stores resources over time, and the more resources stored, the faster they are generated. Select between food, wood, stone, or gold. So it's an economic land hall, land hall, and the Royal Institute is a military landmark. Uh, landmark, yeah, landmark. <laughs> so that's in the Feudal Age. In the Castle Age, you've got the Red Palace, which is described as a defensive landmark, and it acts as a keep. Features high damage arbalest emplacements. Each garrison unit adds an additional arbalest, so it's a defensive one. And then the other one is going to be the College of Artil Artillery, which provides immediate access to produce royal artillery, which do 20% more damage. And then finally, uh, in Imperial Age, well, you don't have much left, but you have the Wonder, which is the Notre Dame, plus the University, which lets you get some important upgrades, like Royal Bloodlines, which increases the health of all cavalry by 35%. So as you can see, the French, very strong cavalry civilization, great economy, a lot of different approaches you can take with the sieve, but overall the one I found works the best is simply going for a smooth early game and then adding a second town center really quickly, making, making a few cavalry units and trying to raid your opponents, and then in the castle age, just 
all in into the cavalry unless you see your opponent making a counter unit then you can definitely switch it up obviously the meta will change this isn't like defined strategies but this is just an early game approach to the french that i've had some decent success with and i'm excited to continue learning them so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video enjoy my other age of empires 4 contents and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace